So hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and today's video is slightly different than what you're used to. I am in my bedroom in normal clothes as opposed to gym clothes. That's because today I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail on our recent home wall build. So giving you some tips, some advice from someone who's just built a home wall build if you're thinking of building one yourself. Maybe some things I would have done differently and some things that I think we got right this time around. This was Nathan and I's first time building a home wall and we had a really great time with it and I just thought I'd share some advice and tips. If you're looking to build your own home wall then hopefully this might be useful for you. I also had a fair few questions on different aspects of the build so I thought that I would answer those in this video so that your questions are answered. So first things first, let's cover size and the space that we were working with. So specifically the space that we had to work with in the garage and then because of our space restraints, the angle that we could have the wall at. So I was asked the question, what was the direct height from floor to ceiling in the garage space? And I believe it was 2000, roughly 2,300 millimetres, so 2.3 metres, <laughs> good conversion. Hug. Um, and we did end up using all of the available space from floor to ceiling, so from the floor or where the kickerboard would end rather I should say to the ceiling beams, so 2.3 metres high and then once we had that measurement we could figure out our angle so we had a few specifications that we had to work with as for the angle, one of which was that as we were using Nathan's parents garage ideally the car would still be able to fit in that garage and they would still be able to use the space and store items of their own which seemed fair so we ended up opting for a 20 degree angle which is not the steepest board I think people usually go for roughly 30 and then the one that we're used to climbing on in the gym is 40 degrees but that does feel quite steep when we first thought about building a wall we knew that we wanted something that we could use as a training tool as well as just recreationally for fun. We thought that it was a good compromise between steepness and um, leaving us some wiggle room to be able to do endurance work on the board. So basically we wanted something that we could do circuits on and we won't get too pumped out on because it was too steep but we could also put some fun roots up that would be a test of power and strength and be a good training tool. I think that 20 degrees was the right choice for us and I think I'd happily go for the same angle again if we were to build the wall again. I guess if we, if money were no object, space were no object and time were no object, a variable degree wall would be the ideal solution for us, something that you could have at whatever angle you fancied, but obviously that would have been a lot more expensive, it would have taken a lot longer time, we would have had to be more technically knowledgeable and skilled I feel to be able to pull that off. So for now we've got the 20 but if I were to do another wall build perhaps we would look into a variable angle wall, that would be really cool. But with time and money and cost, is it cost and money are the same thing. <laughs> With all those considerations in mind, I think that 20 was the right decision, so 20 all the way, and the car still fits in the garage. So, On the subject of space, somebody asked if we were able to leave the wall out in the open all year round, or if we had to protect it from things like rain and snow. So luckily for us, our wall is kind of inside outside, but it's um, in an open garage, so it has a roof and it's like largely protected from the elements, so we don't have to worry too much about things like rain and snow, fortunately. I believe that you can get pre-treated ply or paint it with a protective coating to make it more hardy to the elements, but luckily we didn't have to do that. But if we were to fill the wall outside, then yes, we would get pre-treated ply or treat the ply ourselves. But if you are building a wall outside and you're hoping to keep it outside, then I'd just recommend a tarp or constructing some kind of awning maybe to protect your wall from the elements. Speaking of ply, someone asked what kind of ply and what thickness of ply we use. So our ply is 18mm thick and as far as I'm aware it's just standard, bog standard ply. I don't think there's anything special about it and it's definitely not treated I don't think but I'll double check those details and put on the screen if I'm lying to you. 
So in the Warbell video, I mentioned that we opted to go for screw-on rather than peanuts. The main difference, as I understand it, between a screw-on board, purely screw-on, and peanuts is cost, time, and the ability to reset your roots. Once holes have been put on with peanuts, you can take them off again, swap them around, change the setting configuration, whereas with screw-ons you make a hole in the wall, screw hold in, and then if you want to take it out, you can't realistically screw into the same hole again because it won't hold. I think that's basically it. T-nuts are these threaded steel insets with prongs that insert claws into the ply and then you can tighten them. Honestly, I feel like there's pros and cons to both but if I were going for a more permanent home gym setup then I think we would have used T-nuts, invested the extra time and the extra cost uh, so that we could reset the board more freely. However, as the board will live at Nathan's parents' house and we're not here permanently, this is just a temporary arrangement, we're not likely to be using this board permanently. So perhaps when we've got our own place and we build our own home with it, yes, I think we would use T-nuts. But for a kind of quicker fix, we opted for screw-ons and for the length of time that we'll be able to use the wall. Over the next few years, I think that screw-ons will work fine for us. There are a few downsides that we have come across since having decided to use screw-ons. Many of the holds that we have have two screw holes and we found that our holds do move and budge a little as we climb whereas T-nuts would resist that movement and vibration and they could be tightened at more regular intervals so that we could change roots up and stuff like that. So in an ideal world I think we would have T-nuts but it's not not a good world, so we don't, we have screw-ons. Someone did ask what T-nuts would have added in terms of cost to the build, and in all honesty, probably not very much at all. I think you can pick up 100 or so T-nuts for £17 or something like that, so definitely wouldn't have broken the bank and probably would have been worth the time in the end. Again, if we were going for a more permanent build, I definitely believe in that if you're doing it once, do it right, and I think yeah, as I said, if we were doing it permanently, then T-nuts all the way, but we weren't, so screw-ons it was. As we are on the price of T-nuts, someone asked uh, whether or not it's expensive to build your own home wall, and the answer to that question, I guess, is relative, but for us, yes, it was. It cost us, all in all, I think roughly between £500 and £600, pounds including holes which I guess is relative but to us that's quite a lot of money but the thing is we built the wall because the UK was going into lockdown on the 4th of November the 5th of November and we didn't know how long that lockdown was likely to be prolonged by as it turns out it was only the four weeks that was promised in the beginning but when we first went into lockdown it felt very uncertain and we didn't know how long gyms were going to be shut for. We'd recently gone through the same period that everyone went through in the summer or the spring and summer of not being able to find for months and I think we just wanted to make sure that we had a home training facility so that we could keep climbing for fitness obviously and for keeping our strength up but for also like our mental health and sanity. And I'm really glad that we did build it so it was worth the cost for me but I think for us we just saw it as an investment and a worthy investment and I'm really glad that we did it and I would do it again. Definitely don't regret spending that amount of money on the wall and I know that we'll get lots of use out of it so. I'd say the most expensive part of the whole build was actually the holes and um, buying the holes. When we first decided to build the home wall, we thought that we would try and make a lot of our own wooden holds, but in the end, um, impatience prevailed and we ended up uh, buying a lot of holds <laughs> and they were the most expensive part and easy to get carried away with. So moving on to holds, um, a couple of people asked where we got our holds from, which hold manufacturers we would recommend. Our favourite holds on the board are from a manufacturer called holds with a Z and um, we have a couple of sets of theirs and we really love them. These haven't gone on the board yet because we're a bit worried about using them, they're quite bad. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I have like a whole selection of holes from holes. And then we have a couple from a manufacturer called Self Holds, and we have some from Blue Pill, some from Bluestone, and some Core Feet Holds, I think. Off. Feet are all from Core, the little black chips. Someone asked what kind of screws did you use for your holds, and you used a mix, a whole mix of screws, but mostly 5 or 4.5 by. 40, 60, or 80 millimetres. I'll put the exact types of screws that we used on the screen to save me having to explain. But basically, depending on the size of the hold that we were using, actually, I could maybe. So, for example, we basically just try a screw for size. Obviously, that's a little bit too big for 18mm ply. Um, so that is a 5 by 80 so we'd go for like a 5 by 60 or a 5 by 40 yeah pretty much just like trial and error then someone asked what kind of screws did you use for the larger holds that would usually bolt into the wall um, but you screwed on with screws so we used these little adapters so that we could use holds that uh, basically screws in the bolt holes if that makes sense and I can't feel like you remember what they are called but I'll put the name of them on the screen here somewhere. Someone said I've seen that buying some holds on their own can easily break a hundred pounds how hard is it to make routes that you enjoy? So generally when you're looking on holds websites the bigger holds uh, that cost a lot more um, generally take teen-ups are more difficult just to screw onto the wall so we're limited in that sense and how much we can spend on holds is limited in that sense which has been good I suppose but we have kind of gone a little hole crazy and ended up buying a lot of holds like I said holds were the biggest expense for us um, on the wall build and we did spend quite a lot of money on them. As for how hard it is to make groups that you enjoy. Um, for me, not at all. So the approach that we took generally to setting was uh, we set a single circuit and hopefully I'll be setting another single circuit which I'm going to film the process of. But then after that we pretty much just divided the board into sections and then splatter boarded the board. So in each section we tried to have kind of like an easier, a harder, an in-between hole, different grip types, different orientations to try and give us a good variety. And then we just kind of made roots up once the holds were on the board, if that makes sense. And I said in my wall build inadvertently, we've ended up with lots of holds that work really well together and work really well as sequences. Someone asked, how many roots can you make before it becomes too crowded? and what's a simple way to make a route more difficult. So we haven't yet filled up our board, but with the second circuit that I'm hoping to do, it's definitely reached a point where it's like, we're restricted with the space that we've got as to where we can go with the circuit. But like I said, with the splatter board approach, you can kind of just make endless variations with different holes. You just have to remember the color sequences. As for making a route more difficult, basically there are a couple of areas of the board where we have um, moves where you can either go to a hard or an easy variation so for making roots harder you just go to the harder hold basically. Also eliminating feet so our kicker board has I think four rows of feet and if you want to make a climb harder you're say only allowed to use like the top row or the middle row and see how that changes the climb for you. We've had a lot of fun doing that especially for Nathan um, when you can only use the top row because he's so tall. <laughs> Someone said, I'd love to do that, but I'm not very experienced with route setting. Do you have any tips? So most of my route setting tips are <laughs> intuitive, which isn't very helpful, just to be um, intuitive. So with the white circuit that we set, I set the first hole and then I got my climbing shoes on and just went through it move by move, got on the wall and tried to figure out fun interesting moves that seemed manageable as they were part of the circuit. I didn't want to burn out in the first couple of moves but that also introduced some kind of like interesting challenging movements 
Um, but I definitely didn't have a plan in mind before I set. I just put the first hold on and then the next hold on, then jumped on the wall and tried to figure out what would be a, a fun continuation of that route. Um, someone asked, will you be setting routes to combat certain routes outdoors that you'd like to accomplish? I'd been projecting a climb at Cayley pre-lockdown and now I'll have to start again. So I thought about setting a route similar to it so I can practice similar moves. Hmm, yes and no. So there are a couple of moves that I have set on the board which are kind of close to moves and projects that I've got outside but we don't have any direct simulations because we are just stuck with that 20 degree angle because our, I guess our outdoor projects are more 3D or not a 20 degree angle but there's definitely some moves that we've been able to set that are very similar to outdoor project moves that we have and one thing we have been able to do is identify weaknesses that we have indoors and outdoors and set moves to target those um, so it's been really useful in that respect but yeah I guess being able to set simulations on the board would be really cool and maybe that's where your variable angle would come in useful or uh, maybe actually a way around that would be to set volumes on the wall so that you can make that space a little bit more 3D which is something I guess we're lacking at the moment. Someone said can you talk about your both of your progression through the grades past and current as well as the variation of when the variation of grades you plan to start with on the new wall. So we don't actually have grades on the new wall and I think we both really struggle to set grades at the right grade on the wall if that makes sense but I'd happily do a whole video about our bouldering progression and how we've progressed through the grades throughout the years if that makes sense I don't know if your question was directly relating to the wall and if it was then sorry it's pretty disappointing because we don't have grades on the wall um, and we're not very good at guessing what the grades would be for the problems that we set I'd say the circuit is probably the easiest thing to grade on there. I'd say maybe that was like 6A, 6B, possibly. But it's really, it's difficult to tell. Then someone asked, how do you plan to mark different routes? Are you going to make any wood holds? Um, so for marking different routes, we actually have this little bag of tags, which we've got red, yellow, green. <laughs> red, yellow, green. Um, so we can add those to the wall to like denote different Routes. So far we haven't though and we found it easier to name each hold on the board and then write down um, the routes that we set in a little like training diary. Um, otherwise we would just have like routes everywhere and colourful tags everywhere and it would be quite confusing to keep track of. Um, and are you going to make any wood holds? Uh, I don't know. Hopefully. Um, our plan was to, definitely, but um, I don't know if we will, maybe not this winter, but maybe if we spend more time here over next summer or in the future, then yes, I'd love to make some wood holds, I think that would be a really fun thing to do. So, I think that's pretty much all that I can think of to say about our wall build. Um, I really hope that you found this video really useful and that you enjoyed the first home wall video. If you haven't seen it, then I'll leave a link to it and you can go and watch that. We had a really good time building it and I got very overexcited when it was time to put the first hold on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will be uploading that setting video that I have been promising and also gyms open next week, which has come around so quickly. So normal indoor bouldering content will resume shortly and I'm very excited for that. So I hope that you're all having a brilliant week, brilliant day, and I'll see you in my next video. Also, super quickly, whilst I'm filming the end of the video, I'd just like to say an absolutely massive thank you to my two Patreons. So I set up Patreon a little while ago um, and I wasn't really expecting anything to come of it. So it was a really pleasant surprise when I received my first Patreon the other day so thank you so much it does i appreciate it so much
just give me shelter feed my demons share my